Hello and welcome to yet another video on the YouTube channel of Rethink Peer-to-Peer -peer Kredite. My name is Danny Neithardt and today I'm joined with Mikael Stamm, who is COO and member of the board at Estate Guru. Hi Mikael. Yeah. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Here. What's the situation like in, in, in Tallinn right now? Uh, I think Tallinn overall has been, or Estonia overall has been, not so disrupted by, by the... Uh, Turban times, so we have throughout time we have had the lowest rating in, in, in the virus spread, but still it's now uh, speeding up a little bit. So I think the next weeks will show in which direction it goes. So, but uh, I think overall it's it's quite similar as as it's everywhere in Europe and even world. Yeah. Um, recently had a conversation also with Kadri, uh, focusing a little bit more on on some of the community questions regarding Estegur. I don't know, maybe you have seen it, uh, although it was in German. I don't know how good your German is if you, if you were able to follow up on, on those questions and those topics. Uh, whereas today I would um, prioritize a bit more uh, a broader view and, and the scope on, on, uh, on Estate Guru, like how has uh, 2020 been affecting the business, obviously? Mm. Um, where are you at this point in time? And also like, what, is, what are things to look ahead for then uh, for next year? So um, a lot of topics to discuss potentially. Um, but first of all, maybe you can just uh, start by giving a very quick introduction about yourself. Uh, I know that you joined Twino almost four years ago. Um, what has been your, your personal, your professional background prior starting at uh, Estate Guru and, and what are you currently doing now um, at Estate yeah. Guru? Yeah, currently, as you said, I'm uh, part of the management board, so, but my main focus at the moment is uh, running the existing markets, so uh, looking over the operations and parallelly uh, also looking over the product and IT developments, so but that on day-to-day -day basis, like contributing to the management uh, work and then over or looking all the areas so, mm. so this, but my my background is actually yeah, from the from the banking sector so there i had different roles from from sales to business uh, operations to even some parts of the technology and product development so and to, to to the really high level as well so so i think here at the state group we have a quite quite good uh, mix of people so and the main founders uh, have the really uh, long history in real estate, uh, know it uh, throughout and uh, have gone through different cycles. So, and we have also really good people in risk uh, knowledge and, and then uh, of course IT. So it's all the necessary components to really pros pros succeed in our, our vision to really disrupt mm -hmm. and, and to make the uh, real estate, short-term real estate financing uh, accessible. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, obviously, uh, you personally, just a quick follow up question. Uh, back then, four years ago, did uh, you uh, felt like, okay, Estate Guru sounds like a very uh, interesting enterprise to join? Or have you been uh, approached by Estate Guru? How did that happen? Yeah. So, uh, I, I, in this sense, yeah, I wasn't the main founder, but I joined uh, quite in the beginning because then when, when I joined, we just had gone to, to Latvia, our first expansion, so, but uh, I think it was less than 10 people in the team still, so mm. now we have grown to already 50 person and the structure what we have uh, been changing is, is been huge and now we are kind of ready to even go further, so, so, but uh, interesting, I was uh, <laughs> investor before I joined the team, so, but uh, once Marek approached me, then we found a common understanding and I saw that uh, it aligns really well with my own uh, vision and interest and, and, and I really liked that, uh, uh, that uh, I believed in, in, in this vision that we can really make an impact in, 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 in Europe and in the world that uh, change, changes and this was a really interesting challenge for me and, and I saw that uh, the background of what I have is, is also really needed in the company that I could bring some, some uh, really big additional value uh, for, for the team and, uh, and actually uh, so therefore combining all the all the components what we have in the management team today already which is even now further expanded then then I think it's a good mixture of different knowledges and, and experiences. Mm. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so we learned uh, your your investor yourself, obviously of Estate Guru. Even prior, you you joined the the, the company, and prior Marek has uh, been yeah. approaching you. Uh, very interesting. Um, now let's talk about. Let's probably let's dive right into the, the the topic that probably a lot of investors are concerned about. You know, um, the the effects obviously of uh, the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe from your perspective, you know, as you said, being responsible for the operational side, you know, what, what would you say how Essegur has been affected as a company by, by COVID-19 in general? Yeah, of course. It, uh, uh, I think in the beginning of the April, May, uh, it was uh, really affecting us as well. So we had to uh, make adjustments. We communicated also and throughout different webinars. So we made some uh, cost reduction, etc. Uh, but I think this, this happened for everyone. Like uh, there was a, a uncertain time, so everybody will think, okay, what now happens? But uh, overall, what we what we can say now is that uh, for us it it really uh, worked well because we have. Uh, uh, rolled out really well out of this. So recent months we have done uh, record months. So now we're really again investing into the growth of the company, hiring new people, expanding the new countries, and and uh, uh, this is supported by the really good uh, sales results what we are uh, um, bringing month to month. So um, so and uh, we also saw that the things what we have been. Uh, uh, doing and really thought as important things to do, being transparent and to really think ahead two steps at uh, what, what happens when regulation comes or what happens when something like this happens and all the, all the things what we did as a, already before, these have been helping us to uh, now, now paying the dividends or let's say paying the interest <laughs> and say yeah. in our terms. So, because uh, probably also the investor community saw that uh, only the high interest is, is not something that you should pursue and you really need to look into what is a company and and I think this uh, this year has shown that uh, what are the companies uh, who can survive the crisis time, what are the products or the product offerings what uh, uh, are good for different times and etc. So so yeah, it has been a really interesting time. Tough, lot of lot of work definitely and. Uh, uh, a lot of stress, but at the same time, with every every crisis, there lays an opportunity, and and mm. we we like to think of that we are pushing into this opportunity side. Mm. Now you mentioned a lot of interesting points. Uh, I will pick one after the other now out from from your initial statement. So let's start off with a cost reduction. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's also a webinar that I, or in general, I have to say that I followed a lot of. Uh, the, the external communication of Estate Guru in, in March and April. And I think it was also a webinar during this time when uh, I think also you made the statement, okay, as a as an effect due to pandemic, we decided to reduce or to cut costs by 30%. Can you elaborate mm -hmm. a bit where exactly did you cut costs in which specific areas? Question number mm -hmm. one. And second question already following up. Um, what is the status as of now? So how are you planning as of this point in time? Now we have obviously some sort of the vaccine on the horizon, but at the same time we see an increasing level of, of uh, positive pandemic cases and some sort of a second wave. So first of all, where did you cut costs? And secondly, what is the, the, the status for planning as of now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we a little bit uh, also discussed then what where where the areas, but uh, overall, yeah, our main like uh, uh, what we wanted to achieve is that uh, we are not letting anyone down. Like we are not doing that. Like, hey, let's now cut off uh, half of people and uh, try to survive. So as we didn't know what what will happen, then uh, step by step we started to like uh, try to find ways where we can. Uh, cut the cost, of course, a little bit lower the marketing budget, uh, uh, IT resources also. We put on hold some of the investments like going, for example, Germany uh, earlier or, or, or these kind of things. So, and we put on hold some of the new hirings, what we had planned, so etc. So with this help and then at one point we again decided that, okay, uh, what do we do now? So uh, are, we, are we letting people go or uh, 
or 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 we as a responsible company that uh, we really uh, want to come through as a team through this difficult time then we had to some period also the uh, cut it uh, salaries for everyone so we decided that okay we treat everyone as equal so at some some months we had also this but uh, luckily as i said we we came out quite quite quickly it helped us actually to kind of push into different revenue streams as well so even in even in may we saw that even for example sales dropped around 50 percent compared to, to the previous month and to previous years even but uh, but at the same time the profit the, the yeah revenue only dropped around uh, 30 percent so so this has benefited us as well so so and the overall as a company we have been like really cautious in our budgeting as well we're not going like we're not we're, we're not like a stat, traditional startup like uh, going crazy in, in in cost space and trying to hmm. uh maximize uh, as much invest all the money or like like this but we are more yeah. into like yes we take a strategic investment uh, with this investment, uh, we make certain things, and these certain things should bring us the profitability. A good example of this was uh, uh, 2019 when we partnered up with one of the biggest uh, uh, like fintech investments in Europe, uh, Speed Invest. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, they came in with one, one million. So throughout the year, uh, this was invested into different areas to IT to the key employees uh, to expansion uh, uh, then uh, and all this investment actually paid off uh, uh, and already in the beginning of this year we were already again uh, making profit uh, from month to month so okay this changed again a little bit but uh, this is how, how we're thinking like all investments should bring us to profitability and we need to be self-sufficient. So if we're not taking, for example, additional investment, then we should be uh, covering our cost uh, like this. Hmm. So, but uh, coming then to the second question, how we see today, I think I think already with the like, second wave, uh, it, it is different. So uh, I think, yeah. Uh, like look, look, look and go at all. I think people are, companies are more prepared. The people are more prepared. Yes, there are sectors which are kind of uh, affected by this, but at the same time, people are uh, able to work in this new environment, go, go home and then and, and job gets done. So it's not hmm. putting so much pressure on, on the market itself. Uh, hmm. But for us, it's also like a little bit different. As I say, uh, we have in recent months, we have been doing record sales. It's, it's not a real estate, uh, crisis it's a little bit different crisis so uh, houses are still built people still want to have uh, new new apartments for example buy things maybe they're not pushing so much into the uh, development but but still things are being done so and as a company yes we are continuing looking the iron cost so making our investments courses but still uh, investing into the growth and uh, and uh, at the same time, we have this quite a good uh, cash reserves. And it was also like additionally increased in, in the toughest time uh, during April and May when we had the Cedars campaign. So they were raised uh, additional 1 million uh, to our cash balance. So, but <laughs> uh, as the sales results have been increasing quite well, then uh, we, have, we haven't had uh, need to go into uh, these reserves actually yeah. much. so what i can take out from this is that uh, from still obviously there is a look at costs uh, that are uh, involved uh, surrounding expansion but at the same time you feel like okay we're in a, in a position now where we can also fuel the growth and and continue to expand and 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 move follow or follow forward uh, move forward with um, um, with a you know conservative approach of growing. I would say not as you said, not massively scaling uh, and overly investing, living over your standards. But at the same time, you 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 consider yourself back on track on uh, continuing yeah. to grow now. Yeah, yeah. But I think it showed showed to a lot of companies that uh, even these like uh, highly fueled uh, startups. Uh, 
uh, it was made clear to them that they need to increase the profitability and uh, reduce the burn rate as, as such. So, uh, so yeah, you need to make uh, cautious uh, risks. So, but you, you you can't stay in the same as well because uh, mm. then other competition is coming and taking yeah. your market position. Yeah. Quick follow-up question. Uh, I didn't want to fall into your 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 uh, your your statement and your answer uh, regarding the the salary um, cut. Was it like a, a flat cut that you know all staff? Uh, salary has been reduced by X percent, I don't know, maybe 30 percent, or did management say in particular we're taking a, a bigger a cut from our wages, or can you go a bit more specific here what, what the salary cut exactly means and who and how it was affected then for the employees? Um, we decided to have it like like to equal uh, equal principles, so, so it was like quite flat for everyone flat okay but you don't want to go into the specifics um, yeah i think this is <laughs> better not to go go into too detail in, in this stuff as well so it was communicated like internally to everyone how we do it everyone know what uh how is everyone treated and this was the uh, main like uh, uh key here also to to explain how the business is doing internally uh, we had a meetings week to week basically telling what is the situation and uh, and what what uh, what is our aim and uh, and uh, we try to be also internally really transparent about the things so everyone knows what, what is happening and uh, and etc but luckily there was actually yeah there was we 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 had opportunity to use the there was a kind of different packages i put put up by the governments in, in, in uh, mm. countries where we operate. So we, we were able to actually cover some of, our, of, the, of the salaries through these packages as well. So this helped and I think the, the governments what, what uh, did this are uh, looking from retrospective, uh, it was a good, good, uh, good uh, measure uh, to implement and to, to allow this for the companies. So. Mm. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you for this. Um, yeah. One, one last aspect maybe to follow up also from your initial statement, uh, transparency, communication. Now I, from my personal uh, impression have witnessed that um, in general for a bit more than a year now, Estate Guru is more and more actively in, in communicating with its investors, uh, being more transparent starting from regular blog posts, but as well through webinars, through Q&A through Q sessions, which, which have been holed up uh, permanently, especially during this uh, uh, yeah, weird or weirdly foreseen time then in, in March and April. Do you think this, this, I don't know if it's just a subjective impression, has this been something that has been you know, specifically on the agenda? And do you think that's also one of the key reasons why Esseguro was able to uh, maintain a lot of trust from investors because when we look at the numbers, new signed up investors every month, as well as the loan volume, I think Estate Guru was able to very quickly overcome this um, liquidity crisis that we have witnessed in some peer-to-peer -peer platforms as well as crowdfunding platforms. Um, what can you say to that? In this sense, yeah, transparency has been in the core from the beginning and we have, have a heavy like uh, discussion on the management team as well like uh, how can we and should we do that and then eventually we again like hey we want to be transparent and yeah, let's show the defaults and uh, let's show the portfolio and let's not be afraid like even if, if, if somebody is like uh, telling hey you have some uh, hey you have defaults like uh, then you tell yeah but this comes with a comes with the business and then you explain and then this puts actual pressure for yourself as well that you need to perform well and then to leave the expectation. So I think, yeah, and we have, we were actually one of the first ones to start uh, doing the audited the re annual reports and uh, publishing in the web page. Uh, I think we were the, one of the first ones to actually publishing the monthly portfolio overviews and not showing the only that how, hey, this was a good result, sales results, but actually showing that, the, hey, we have also defaults and uh, I don't know, loss of capital, okay, we haven't had yet, but 
uh, still how the recoveries are happening and to really to show and to have this loan updates where you show that okay these are this is happening like this and uh, and etc so and at the same time from the beginning we like uh, even though there wasn't need to be deregulated in the countries but for example we weren't to really went to the Lithuania Finland and tried to get the regulation there even though there's not uh, yet the Pan-European regulation yet, which is now approved and now the countries are implementing but it still takes one to two years to really go live uh, for the companies so 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 yeah I think during the crisis we just a little bit increased uh, the level of, of communication but uh, yeah. but uh, I think there's a no such a thing like over communication so you could do it even <laughs> more and more so we also see that there are areas where we could improve and do better so we are setting as a, ourselves a really high standards to uh, in, in this segment and hmm. yes okay so Let's hopefully start. yeah it, so hopefully it helps uh, uh, to build the trust and then we see as a big big component of building the trust and then hopefully the investor who use our platform value it and uh, and uh, we are also thankful thankful for all the investors who are sharing their feedback uh, where we could improve so you can't be perfect uh, in all the areas so the question remains that if you get the feedback what you're doing with it do you ignore it or you tell ah uh, you don't know or you actually uh, work it through and and you become better and if you have the mindset of continuously becoming better then then i think uh, then you have, have the advantage and then of, of being the great great player in the market hmm. let's dive a bit more into the the development of the real estate market now you mentioned in the beginning you are like an investor yourself i, I assume you you continue also to uh, to invest uh, some some portion um also then through through estate guru um how do you currently you said uh, also like this has not been a real estate crisis um how would you say as of this very moment uh, is the risk reward ratio for investors going into the real estate market Mm -hmm. Like I think our like long term aim is that uh, uh, like whoever or whatever uh, uh, you have in your investment portfolio, then actually you should have uh, some small portion of uh, of real estate back loans in your portfolio, of investment portfolio. So overall, we see that this this is being as a as a as a vision that all everyone who is doing saving or making their investment they also parallel to the i don't know real estate or stocks or bonds they also have some share of uh, of uh, real estate back loans so not sure, all of course because then it is not goes uh, against the diversification rules but uh, uh, and why because that actually what we have shown throughout the years that uh, that uh, this kind of product can bring you quite a steady uh, low risk 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 is always with every investment but uh, we will still consider our our real estate back loans as a low risk uh, uh, investment product so and and at the same time bring you quite a good uh, steady uh, return so looking at the real estate market itself yes uh, uh, I think there's a uh, always opportunity to enter the market and whatever it is and in our case it, it started with the last crisis the real estate crisis the product itself so uh, we kind of feel and see that uh, this product is quite good for the turbulent times so whatever it is like um, so and that uh, and even this year's kind of show that uh, it, uh, it it is uh, able to survive this more turbulent times as well because what you have you have always this real estate uh, as a collateral even though if the, for example the value of the real estate is reducing then then you still have some kind of real asset what you can sell and uh, uh, liquidate and then get your money back through that yes it might take maybe longer in 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 in, in more turbulent times or if for example it hits the 
real estate market, then it might take longer and maybe there's some kind of uh, this bigger discount, what you need to do, but still uh, you're not going directly to your uh, uh, into the principal amount. So, hmm. so I don't know if, if it is answered, but the, um, from looking from economical situation, uh, as, as, as I mentioned a bit earlier as well, then as long as uh, people have their jobs, and I think uh, what has happened now is that uh, uh, the jobs have a little bit uh, shifted so you, so you can easily work from home and, and still get your salary uh, working like this. You don't need to go to the office. So yes, there are sectors which are uh, kind of have their problems. For example, yes, all this uh, leisure and uh, travel and all this interest is in problem, but uh, this is not uh, uh, all of the uh, all of the market and then the uh, job workforce. So, and parallel, you see all the other areas what are booming. For example, people are renovating their homes, uh, um, buying stuff for home, and all that. So, yeah. so the money is moving in the different directions. And at the same time, what what we could also see that maybe people are still uh, maybe not going traveling, but they're buying, uh, for example, villa near the seaside and uh, having their uh, going out of the weekends to that places or so sure. the developer can develop there or or people buying bigger apartments to have one room for their home office, for example. So yeah. we see that. No, well, I think like the, the underlying question for me here, maybe I have to be more precise. I'm sorry for that. Um, yeah. is especially like considering risk reward ratio in, in this turbulent times. Obviously, we understand like um, that, you know, there is, you know, always homes or, or you know, there, there's always uh, a place to stay needed, whether it's uh, retail, whether it's uh, for private people, whether it's for commercial reasons. Um, but I think the underlying uh, fear many had was also okay if we're driving uh, into a recession and I, I think it's still not um, for granted that you know this will not be the case in in the future maybe 2021 how are or how secure are assets and how secure are the underlying assets uh, assets um, and basically the the value that is within properties um, have you to some extent also re-evaluated the value of, of those properties? Have you adjusted the risk assessment? I know that well, there was a, a couple of um, adjustments that you made, like focusing more on, on uh, urban areas, for instance. Um, but maybe you can talk a bit how you adjusted a bit the risk assessment and also the re-evaluation um, of your properties considering that there might be a, a crisis coming up, that there might be a recession that as a result could also uh, massively lower the, the value of, of those uh, securities. So yeah, in this sense, it's like this is a continuous work what our risk department is uh, doing and monitoring the market situation and making these uh, adjustments uh, based on the markets, what, what they see, what is the trend. So, <clears throat> Uh, during yes, April, May, there was more uh, severe measures taken. So we really uh, reviewed uh, whom we give and how we give. So some of the segments were removed. Uh, for example, yeah, all this kind of uh, uh, travel industry parts uh, was uh, more more stricter, and also we lowered a little bit the loan to value offerings. So uh, more concerned in this sense. But uh, during the summer, we again a little bit. Uh, uh, also went more, more, uh, more, uh, maybe what's the correct word for risk tolerant in, in, in some of the segments. So it, I think our like risk manager would, would be able to go really into, into the details and explain you how, how we do it on daily day basis. But, but, but maybe the main message from my side is that uh, this will be, this is monitored by, by all the time and we are also doing some 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 small uh, adjustments based on the market. Hmm. So, and again, maybe one comment about the again market situation is that why it seems at the moment, that even though if the recession comes, then I think from 
it's not that long from the previous time and then the, the message from let's say 2008 and 9 then the message what were taken then by the by the european uh, kind of uh, regulators and on the local regulations so i think in this uh, sense the uh, real estate market and then the banking uh, environment is much more healthier so banks don't have so much bubble in, in inside of their portfolios and, and then actually all the real estate developers who went through the last time are now more prepared so what they do is actually they just uh, maybe postpone some of the uh, projects they're not going I don't know building let's say 10 apartments parallelly but maybe they're building uh, 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 five apartment buildings at the same time they're postponing some of the projects but what what it means that uh, the demand and uh, supply remains in a similar level. So this then means that the uh, prices are not so much affected. So, so again, I say, till there's people are uh, have their jobs and, and uh, getting the salaries and there's always demand for, for the real estate. So, so, but that doesn't mean that, uh, that uh, everyone uh, should make their own corrections in, in their portfolios so if, if you if you uh, have a good arguments that uh, you see that something is uh, might happen then of course you need to uh, adjust your portfolio based on, on your own risk uh, and reward ratios as you see suitable mm. okay um, I want to talk about the, the, the pipeline of new projects for Estate Guru. Um, I took a note that back in April uh, this year, I don't know if it was you, but it, it was communicated that the pipeline for new projects within the next 12 months would be around 40 million euro. Um, how big is the pipeline right now? And uh, is there maybe also specific markets where you feel especially comfortable to expand? Now, in the previous record month, we have seen half of the 15 million euro uh, went uh, to uh, Lithuania. So maybe you can comment on this as well, please. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think in the Lithuanian case, it was it's kind of a little bit cumulative uh, result as well. So some of the deals from the previous month uh, were, were accumulating into that month and this helped to increase. But uh, overall, yeah, we see uh, kind of... Uh, increase in, in sales uh, one part from the existing markets what we had in, in traditionally the Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania but it was also uh, as we now uh, finally like uh, officially opened the Finnish market uh, with a local regulation and, and all that so we see actually a Finnish uh, market uh, pipeline uh, building up quite well and uh, and uh, soon uh, uh, we, we can have more uh, news from Germany as well because uh, the country manager is in place and uh, we are now finalizing all the uh, last bits and pieces to be fully 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 live to go with the, uh, with the bigger volumes and then start uh, originating so yeah I think that pipeline for the upcoming months have uh, built up really well uh, so uh, we hope to end this year uh, around uh, 120 million uh, so which is uh, maybe not what we expected in the beginning of year so we want even to do double uh, from the last year which was 80 million so at least 160 but even more we aim to do 200 million and we were in the traction but we are then April May May which is a little bit lower and then we readjusted our uh, targets so so now we yeah, aim to around uh, 40 to 50 percent increased compared to the mm -hmm. previous year and I, I think in this environment it's it's uh, it's uh, quite a greater achievement uh, so but uh, but looking ahead then definitely the the, the the growth increase will come from from the bigger markets where we now have entered uh, Finland Germany and next year we will be uh, 
uh, focusing on, on opening uh, at least one to two new countries as operationally. So we might be continue doing this kind of uh, more cross-border uh, deals as, as we did in Sweden recently and, and maybe uh, Spain and uh, some other countries where we have the legal structure ready but we don't have operations yet but uh, uh, we get a lot of, lot of leads around Europe so, so we uh, uh, are, are really uh, choosing the places where we know that we have everything in place and we can adjust the risk accordingly. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. I think uh, I think one of the most compliant uh, crowdfunding businesses. You always make sure you have all the licenses put together and in place um, when, when you do do business in the in the respective countries. Definitely something that people can can observe with Estate Guru. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about maybe what could fuel the growth of Estate Guru even a bit more uh, next year, which could be institutional investors. Now, in 2019, it was uh, roughly 10% of the loan volume that has been funded through institutional investors. Um, this year, it was planned to increase that number to a range of 30 to 40%. Um, what do the actual numbers say? First question. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, why, is, why does Estegur have the tendency to shift more towards institutional investors now? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think COVID affected a bit this, this uh, area as well. So we hope to uh, onboard some of the new institutional investors uh, much quicker, but it has uh, prolonged the negotiations, but we have, uh, we're having quite a nice negotiations with uh, really big, big institutions and funds around Europe. So, uh, but still it remains around uh, 10%. But uh, why it's strategically- 10% and... this year? Yes. Okay. So it it has remained similar to the previous yeah. years, but as okay. the volumes grow, then actually the total amounts have been increasing. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, why it remains critical uh, strategically and also what what it means for the retail investors, I think this is both beneficial for both for the uh, business, but also investors. And uh, what I mean by this is that uh, we see that as we are growing in, in volumes then uh, then uh, then this also increases the uh, demand for capital so to, to, to speed up uh, this growth then institutional products suit quite well here that uh, they can come in and bring more volume view but what it means also for retail is that uh, we really uh, still in our strategy we really see the retail as a really important uh, part of our, our business model so and but what it allows is for example today if we would need to put five million loan into the platform it will be uh, takes a lot of time and uh, it will be complicated to, to quickly uh, fill it mm -hmm. up but for example if we would have more institutional lines available it will mean that uh, we could uh, let's say i don't know uh, put 50 percent or 60 percent of institution and then keep uh, the uh, enough, uh, uh, enough like uh, volume space for, for retail uh, investors. Yeah. Yes, and what it means that actually it helps you to, to diversify uh, the portfolio and further and to get access to the deals what otherwise you wouldn't be able. To, like five million, it's only banks, for example, or something yeah. like really big investors. But now uh, you could go with the fifty euros and still get a part of the really big projects, and then then this is like democratizing the uh, investment. Uh, portfolio and opportunities and mm -hmm. uh, at the same time then uh, you could uh, access to different portals as well and and all that so le 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 there's a lot of additional value coming out of this uh, for uh, for uh, all sides yeah so probably also with a bigger amount of funds through institutional investors as guru may have even probably uh, issues to allocate this to the loan portfolio as the pro as the pipeline is probably not as big as it's supposed to be to really serve then all interests from institutional to retail investors. That is at least what, what I'm hearing out from, from your statement. It's always for us a chicken and egg in this sense. <laughs> we are parallel working on, on both ends. So having the product in a, in a shop and at the same time uh, having the uh, visitors in the shops. Yeah. At the same time, uh, maybe the question, 
you know, on one side, you know, real estate loans are considered to be more stable, more safe, probably with less margin, lower returns, mm -hmm. but definitely with a safer background. Now we have seen a lot of people uh, in the beginning of 2020 being a bit more frightened, wanted to ha place their assets more into secure uh, or their, 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 their funds more in secure assets. Now we have seen uh, retail investors come to the, came to that conclusion very quickly in, in terms of, of estate guru, but maybe, you know, was it, was there some sort of barrier or which requirements couldn't be met from institutional side to not just, you know, use that opportunity in terms of for estate guru uh, to, to fuel or to keep up with, with growth plans uh, by, by injecting some funds through uh, institutional investors. The thing is, I think, with the institutional, uh, there's a lot of like, uh, it's a long process to, to really set up the partnership. So, and in these turbulent times, it, it's even longer because they want to make sure all the kind of due diligence and all the things what uh, they need to be sure. And at the same time, they might have their own house burning and to really look where, where they're going and what they're doing. So, but I think uh, what we have seen and uh, uh, also for the institutional investors, we have had a really good partnership already uh, evolving throughout the years and, and, and uh, step by step we're also getting more attractive to the institution because through our, uh, uh, through our originations where we are with the countries, but at the same time with the volumes, so all this is uh, also working out really well. Uh, for for, uh, for 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 them as well. So, uh, mm. so yeah, this is this is this is how we see it at the moment. At the moment. So Fully answered your answer, but so a lengthy a lengthy due diligence process. Then you know it's not like obviously you know like the immediate snap that retail investors do. Okay, I pull back my money, I invest. Obviously, I understand there is a different setup required for institutional investors. Maybe to, to finish off this chat. Maybe one more comment. So, but what is actually also beneficial for the retail investor is that uh, if they have a platform uh, which is supported by institutional, so I think this is kind of an extra layer of, of security because it shows that uh, usually that uh, uh, these institutions are going through, like, like I said, they're heavy due diligence of the platform. So they look all the portfolio, all the process, all the people, every, everything is screened and uh, made the decision based on that. So if you, if you see that the platform is just having institution, then it shows that uh, there's a big trust onto this company as well. Sure, absolutely. And that's why exactly my question. So maybe, um, you know, why hasn't there been no additional institution investors, especially this year? Maybe Estee Guru hasn't been their number one priority to allocate funds into uh, proper, uh, property backed assets, um, uh, secured uh, collateralized ads, assets. Um, so that's exactly the background of my question. So maybe if you would have kept up with the, pro with the promise or the expectation to, to deliver 30, 40% of that loan volume through institutional funds, then maybe, you know, this could have been also an additional layer of, wow, you know, like even now the big players are fully into those, into the system of Estegur and how they operate. So that's exactly the kind of point I was trying to make. Yeah, but maybe my comment still here is that uh, it's not that there's no, no interest. We, show, uh, we only see the increase in interest and, but uh, the main, main maybe the bottom here was uh, uh, timing, let's say. We have like discussions going on, different institutional funds from, from uh, from Scandinavia to to France to Germany to UK to Switzerland so and we are now actually uh, building up our uh, own capital team as well so there's a little bit shift in in, 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 in the team setup as well so mm. I have so, one last question yeah. one last yeah, question sorry time time is is is, is the, maybe the main 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 answer here mm. okay. Uh, just one last question to, to finish off this topic with institutional investors. I know obviously you have already some um, that work closely with, with Estate Guru. Um, can you v reveal a bit 
um, some some details about how in general the collaboration structure looks like so at which funding volume for instance does it start and when do you say okay considering this volume uh, it makes sense to set up a collaboration uh, more or less uh, do we talk about a, a guaranteed length of a collaboration period saying like okay we invest x amount for a time period of uh, z years or can you just give a few details on how those uh, collaboration details are structured with institutional investors yeah of course there are like different structures what we're able to provide for the institutional so but uh, for example some some, some of the co collaboration what we have now it's uh, and usually also with different structure it is it's it's quite similar let's say to the to the also the retail investor i would say that the retail investors everyone of us have our own uh, uh, kind of investment strategies as well that okay i would like to go to these and these countries maybe not to go into that uh, product mm -hmm. and, and the same actually applies to institutions so each of them have their own uh, kind of uh, portfolio they would References. like to uh, yeah build for example this in this country maybe this kind of uh, uh, deals and etc so basically kind of set up the auto invest for them that uh, and uh, uh, and uh, start dividing their money into the into the uh, projects which fill their criteria so mm -hmm. so parallel uh, together with the uh, uh, retail, they are making these investments. So, so this is like one example of how it yeah. how it's set up. Okay, so but maybe they have expectations. We will only want to invest in certain specific loans in certain countries. But can you say like at which funding volume a collaboration usually starts? Is that five hundred thousand euro? Is that one million or what are again, we talking different. about? Again, different. You can. With a smaller players, you can talk about like five to ten million, but uh, the different uh, appetites, different levels. So they are the institution who will tell, okay, I, I, I won't start talking to you before I don't know. You are able to do fifty million per month for something like this. So again, yeah. this is like really developed uh, ecosystem of, of that and and. Sure, but Estate Guru yeah. itself, Estate Guru itself, do you as a company say, you know, like unless we're talking about at least five million euro, it doesn't make sense for us to set up a structure or when does it start? Yeah, for us, it's also there are some criteria, like otherwise we will tell it, hey, let's kick it off, for example, that uh, uh, you just try it out of the platform and, and if you want, want, want more tailored uh, solution, then... Uh, then, uh, then there are certain amounts that you need to. Hmm. Uh, so you can't co communicate a specific number. Um, uh, at the moment, yeah, I will be a little bit cautious about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. Um, yeah, we're, we're coming towards an end. Um, let's let's talk a bit about you know just quickly about the outlook about the future. You know, obviously, considering the difficult environment um, businesses have been in this year, I think um, Esseguro showed quite a, a stable uh, position, and I think was still to to this extent growing to a to a good level. I would say, from the outside perspective, um, how satisfied are you personally um, looking at the position of Esseguro this year? What will be like your overall conclusion first of you know? Uh, looking at 2020. Mm. I like saying straight away then we're really like uh, the team is always like pushing and trying to do better and better and if you're like oh uh, not going like extra mile then you think oh, okay uh, was it good enough and uh, did we did do well but uh, uh, then you sometimes feel say, okay, we should have done any more. But again, like uh, trying to push this uh, growth mindset a little bit further, then looking back to the year, then uh, then I think we can be really uh, happy about uh, the results and, uh, and uh, 
I'm really grateful that uh, actually investors who have joined the platform also uh, see that uh, this is a good place to come. So we have a, uh, we end the year again with a growth in, in investors in, in portfolio. Uh, we have kept the portfolio in good shape. So looking defaults, uh, then it, it is uh, in an accepted level what we have set ourselves. So everything, uh, and we went through the hardest months uh, and uh, being able to grow after that. So overall, I think it, it, it has been a uh, great year and a great fun, fun foundation for the upcoming uh, years, uh, what we want to achieve and do. So. Okay, let's look at the immediate future. Uh, 2021 is right ahead. What can people and what can investors uh, in particular expect from Essay Guru next year? Uh, overall, yeah, we want to continue bringing the good investment opportunities. Uh, what, what can I expect is to have even more diver diversification because new countries are coming up, so you can diversify between countries. Uh, there are uh, several uh, interesting uh, product features uh, being built, uh, which will be uh, launched one of them probably already end of this year and uh, uh, some of things will take uh, longer and we will expect to implement to next year there will be some kind of updates on the visual uh, views of, of, of the platform to make it even more more better and convenient for the investors so and parallel yeah on the background there is a lot of like uh, work done on the background when we look about product why so to, to, to make it even more scalable and, and uh, efficient uh, for, for the growth in, in the upcoming years. So, hmm. so, so yeah, we're working parallel on different streams, bringing new countries, continue bringing new deals uh, with a good return and parallel uh, improve the products. So, and again, like we have said always, Please come with your ideas, and uh, we also uh, try to try to execute as much as possible of this feedback. Mm. All right. So we understood geographic expansion is coming next year, as well as some new product features. Um, we're all excited for it. Um, thank you very much for your time, Mikael. Any last words or last comment from your side? <laughs> I think in today's environment, it's always stay healthy and uh, continue investing. <laughs> All right. Not only state group, but uh, making yourself that uh, uh, you have some kind of research to, to live through the turbulent times. All right. Thank you very much for your time and for your answers, Mike. Okay. Thank you.